What's going on guys? Josh here, Yak Bass and Outdoors, Vibe Kayaks Pro Fishing Team. Hope all is well today. It's a beautiful day here in Dawsonville, Georgia. And it's supposed to be beautiful in the next two days. So tomorrow I'm gonna hit the water, hopefully get some tight lines, set some hooks. I can't wait. I can't wait to get back out there and uh, see what I see what I can still do. <laughs> Cause I haven't been in forever. But uh, today I'm getting all my gear ready, getting everything cleaned up, getting everything set. Um, and also I'm installing a drag chain. If you're not familiar with what a drag chain is, it's basically a retractable dog leash or clothesline uh, or how, however you want to call it and basically hook to two, one to two feet of log chain or, or heavy top metal chain. Um, so today I got everything set up. I'm going to walk you through how everything is done, what are you going to need, how you're going to do it and uh, get everything set up guys. Hope you enjoy. I'm back on my phone today and uh, so I'm going to be pausing in and out, back and forth, uh, switching the camera around, so on and so forth. So let's get right into it. Alright guys, I got the yak set up. Um, so basically what all you're going to need to install slash build this drag chain is going to be first and foremost, you got to have the yak and that's all set up and ready to rock and roll. Um, you're also going to need some type of retractable dog leash or clothesline. I got this at Home Depot for nine bucks. It's 20 feet long. Um, I've already taken out the the clothesline that was in there and I've replaced it with paracord. Um, that's a good thing to have. Paracord's a whole lot stronger and uh, you can tend to get a little bit more on the reel itself um, if you replace it with uh, paracord. Um, so once you got that, you got your paracord, you're going to need a rivet tool. I'm gonna uh, put my pad eyes in with rivets, so I don't need my rivet tool, some carabiners, um, a razor knife, some tire, um, some tire inner tube. Um, I just got that at Walmart, three bucks. Um, I basically cut it to length. You don't need your two. I got two sections of one foot log chain from Home Depot, a couple of bucks also. Um, you're gonna need some uh, rivets. I got them at Academy Sports Yak Gear. Um, 3 sixteenths, uh, that's what kind of drill bit you're going to need. Um, you got your rivets, you got your pad eyes, um, and also your zigzag cleat, a marker, and some sealant, some type of sealant. Um, I've had good luck with E6000. Uh, I've used it on a lot of my other boats, and um, so uh, I haven't had no trouble with it. It's waterproof, it's industrial, it's basically industrial type glue slash sealant. Um, it's waterproof and I've had good luck with it so I'm going to um, basically uh, use that and to seal all my holes you can use any type of you know you know boat sealant or anything like that marine sealant but uh, I just choose to use that um, once you got that all laid out get everything together um, basically on start setting up how you're gonna want it to run some people put it in the front of the boat and some people have it running off the back of the boat. Um, me personally, I want to run off the back of the boat because also I'm gonna. This is gonna also be used as a regular anchor. Also, um, I don't have an anchor trolley. Um, I've had one on my other boats. They're they're good products. I like them. Um, they do come in handy sometimes. But for me, I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as I can and um, run it off the back where I can easily attach a, a regular size anchor if I need to. But uh, let me get everything set up and rock and rolling. Get the camera flipped around. We'll get into it one pad eye just to keep that keep that cord there I don't know if y'all can see that um, I've already I've already installed that um, so basically I can have where I want to run this paracord down and I'm gonna run it down to the inside of my rudder um, it will not affect the rudder whenever it's down um, it's not gonna affect it whatsoever it's not even gonna come even close to it um, so I decided just to run it straight through there if you don't have a rudder you can also just uh, put a pad eye on the back and just basically run your cord down through the bottom. Um, same principle, this is just holding my cord back here. And uh, whenever I go to pull it up, it'll keep it up out of the water. Um, so first things first, um, make sure you clean the area where you're gonna be working first. Um, anytime you put any type of stickers or any type of sealant or any type of any type of install whatsoever, you wanna clean that area. Cause you don't wanna get dust or, or, or dust or you know, grass, leaves, anything like that up under that sealant because it's going to create not it's not going to create a good seal. So I've already cleaned it all off. I just use basically Windex. Um, you know, you can use any type of soap and water. Um, basically works the same. And uh, first thing you're going to do is you're going to line out how you want your pad eyes to run. I'm going to use about four to five pad eyes um, just along through the back all the way to the back. Um, I'm going to try to keep it from that this um, paracord going over that Seagos label. 
I really like it. I don't want some core to be um, keeping it up so or blocking it. So um, I've already got, like I said, I've already got my first pad eye in. So now you got to decide where you're going to put your next one. Um, I'm going to put my next one right here. Um, I'm going to try to cock eye it just a little bit where I don't mess up with the track system or anything up underneath it. Um, I don't want that rivet to puncture anything else or anything like that. Um, once you, once you uh, get that set, you're going to take your marker. Give me one second, guys. I'll try to set this up. All right, guys. So once you got everything set up, everything lined up, you're going to take your pad eye. Okay, like I said, 3 16 hole. Um, just a basic plastic pad eye. And you're going to take your marker. I'm just using the Expo. Some people use permanent markers. Something just to mark those holes before you drill them. Um, so you're going to put it wherever you want it to go. And you're going to take your marker. And you're going to put it right in between where those rivets are going to rivets are going to sit in. Rivets are going to sit in. Um, so we got my two marked. Make sure I got everything set up how I want it. Always double check, triple check before you decide to drill that hole because it's become more of a problem. You don't have to redo it and so on and so forth. You don't want that to happen. Um, so once I got that set, um, I got my got my holes marked where I want them to go. I'm going to take that pad eye off and get my drill. I'm using an electric drill. You can use a hand drill, anything like that um, with your 3 16 drill bit on it. Basically, once your pad eye's off, you are going to... <laughs> Excuse me, still coming down, uh, still coming off of bronchitis. You're gonna take your drill bit and you're gonna drill real slowly those those two holes that you already marked. Alright, once you get your once you get your two holes drilled, let me get my pad out again in my ceiling. Uh, sorry people are blowing up my phone left and right but basically you're gonna take your sealant you're gonna take your pad eye some people do this some people don't I'm gonna put some sealant just on the back side of the pad eye just a little bit okay just a tad bit just to kind of keep it on there while while I'm uh, riveting the rivet down um, once you got that set you're gonna go ahead and put that over your holes make sure you line up your holes just right And sometimes, guys, you might have to clean up your holes that you drilled. Um, sometimes the drill moves or the hole gets put in a different place. So, you know, you might have to fix it or anything like that. So, you got your sealant just to make you make you good to go. Also, you're going to take your sealant and you're going to take the back side of your rivet. With these rivets, these are specific for kayaks. Um, this little plastic rubber type um, coating on it. And then you also have a little wa washer, a little rubber washer. I'm just going to put some sealant on the rivet itself. So whenever it's set in place, it can go ahead and dry and, and create that watertight seal, which uh, sometimes you don't have to, but this is always recommended. Um, I always like to, like I said, double check, triple check, whatever you might want to call. And, uh, you know, make sure I, I, I don't want to run into a different problem down the road. So basically, you're gonna take your rivet, you're gonna slide it into those holes that you have created, okay? Should slide fairly smooth down into that hole. All right. You're gonna take your rivet tool, you're gonna put it right over, let me get another rivet. You're gonna put it, basically, once that's in that hole, you're gonna take this rivet, just like I'm sure a lot of, a lot of people have used a rivet gun. Um, you're just gonna take that, slide it down on there, then you're just gonna start pumping it. You know, pump it real slow, keep good tension on it, not too much. And then eventually, um, whenever the rivet is set, it's going to break some some ex, some of this extra metal off of it. And then that's no, that, that'll let you know that it's all done. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Just like that. I'm gonna take a pair of pliers and pull out that other piece of metal. Basically move on to the next one. I am gonna have to doctor up this hole. 
Give me just one second, guys. All right. All right, so I doctored up my hole. I'm gonna go ahead and, like I say again, put sealant around your rivet itself before you slide into the hole. You're gonna slide it straight down. It should go in there quite nicely. Take your rivet tool again and go ahead and get this one set. That one's set. Once you got both of your rivets set into your pad eyes, you are going to, you'll have access sealant around it. You see how I have access sealant around it? All right here. You're gonna wanna clean that off with a paper towel or a rag or anything. Um, I just use what I clean the area with first with Windex. You're gonna wipe it off just that access. Make sure it's clean to go. And that's pretty much it, guys. There's your pad out with your rivets. I'm gonna go ahead and pop in these other through, uh, other two or three. And then before I go any further, after I get those set in, I'll come back with y'all and we'll go from there. All right, guys and gals, so here it is. Got all my pad eyes connected. Just like I said, running right down into the rudder. Basically, there, there it is right there. There's the, there's the bread and butter of it so far. Everything else is just attaching the chains and everything else, which we're about to go over now. Um, I've also went ahead and did the uh, zigzag cleat. I went ahead and did that. You do that the same way you do your, do your pad eyes. You now you drill your two holes. I'll show you. Drill your two holes. Okay. Silicone behind it. And then you silicone your rivet. Slide it down in there. Keep pumping that rivet gun until that thing pops and you're good to go on there sturdy. So, <clears throat> you're probably thinking, you know, just like I told you before, it's gonna be a drag chain. You're gonna have your two. So hey. Hey hey. So you're gonna have your little man just cruising around in his car. You're gonna have your two one foot log chains. Uh, it's probably a little bit smaller than a regular old school log chain that uh, a lot of the old school farmers are used to. Um, but, so, I got these at Home Depot like I said. I think it's like, you know, like 15 or 20 cents a, um, a foot. I mean, it's real dirt cheap, guys. I mean, I mean, cut and dry. Tractor Supply has them. A lot of different places have them. Um, and you also got your inner tubes. So what you're going to do with your inner tubes, um, you basically cut them, and you have a little bit left over on the ends. So you're going to zip tie those ends. Okay, you're going to slide this inner tube into those chains, just like that. Okay, you're going to slide them over, and then you're going to zip tie your two ends. You're going to zip tie up here. You're gonna zip tie down here. You're wondering why? Why do I do that? Well, you you put something top, you know, inner tube, duct tape, um, industrial um, heat shrink, or anything like that. Um, you do that where, say, you're floating down the river, and it's it's less of a problem to get snagged whenever those those chain links are are covered with some type of rubber material or tape or anything like that. So uh, let me slide them um, slide them chains in the inner tubes, zip them off. And uh, I'll get back with you. All right, guys. I just finished up with the uh, covering the chains with the inner tube. I'll go ahead and give y'all a sh shot. Um, right here, you see, I got two of them. All right, I'm using two one foot long log chains. There's a reason for that. Um, some people just use one. Some people use a two foot one. But I basically I took two feet and I cut it in half, and I attached carabiners to each end. Once you run that tube through. You're gonna attach a zip tie to the end of it. We'll hold that thing closed. We'll hold it on there. So when this is dragging across the bottom, it's you know the chain links ain't gonna get hung up in anything. And then you just take a hole. You poke a hole right through the top, and you run your carabiner through. So if I'm ever on the river, and I just want to use one, I can just sit there and attach just one to it. Well, if I want a little bit more, quick and easy, attach the second one, just like that. Only thing I did up top is I just tied a figure eight on a bike right here, just to have a little bit of loop where I can uh, um, attach them on and off. Um, so that that's what I decided to do. So basically, it's completely done now. Um, 
I'll flip the camera back around and I'll show you the whole scheme of things. I the camera flip back around. So basically, here it is. All finished up, cleaned up, ready to rock and roll. Um, the drag chain with retractable leash is complete. Um, so basically, you know, basically the rundown of it, you just, um, you got your dog leash or clothesline up under there. I just put it up on the seat. Some people put it next to the seat. I just put mine up under there. I know with, uh, all Jacksons, I know, uh, a dog leash will fit underneath the uh, handle. Um, but since I use a clothesline, my one's a whole lot bigger. So, um, a lot of kayaks that will work. Some of them will, some won't. You just have to try it out. Basically, um, I got it up under there. I got the cord just running up straight up through this little groove where if you want to have the Seago sit in the lower setting. Um, I typically have it in the high setting. I never take it down. So um, I just run up through that groove. And I uh, had it in the cleat. And basically all you do is un unattach it from the cleat. And you'll see it dropping. Just like that. Whenever it hit the ground, you, you know, you just tie it off right back at your zigzag cleat. And you're good to go. Just let it drag all the way. Um, also, um, whenever you get finished up with it, you just pull it right up. And yes, I would highly recommend that bef um, before you start messing around with it, make sure your uh, silicone's dry. Mine's pretty much almost dry. Um, that's some fast dry and stuff. But uh, you'll feel it since I tied that um, figure eight on the bottom there, and you'll feel it hit that rudder. So if you run it through like I did here, you'll feel it hit that rudder. You'll know it's all the way at the top. You just attach it back in your zigzag cleat. Just like that. And you're good to go. That's it. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed, um, and I hope this video will help you make your next drag chain or dog leash chain, whatever you want to call it. Um, I can't wait to use it. I'm, like I said, I'm getting out on the water tomorrow, and it's very useful, especially, you know, in the rivers, because within rivers, you know, you don't want to just sit there and blow by. You know, you might get caught up in the current and blow by a lot of good holes that might be holding a lot of fish. So you have that drag chain down, that's going to slow you down way down. That's why I attach two different chains in case one's going a little bit slower or a little bit faster. I'm going to attach both of them, have that medium speed, and I'm good to go. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. Um, if you have any questions, any concerns, or any any ideas of, of how to make it even better, you know, feel free to comment below. Um, if, if you like this video, go ahead and like it and, and share it as much as possible. That would be outstanding if you could. And also, if you enjoy this channel and you want to see more of these types of videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But uh, today, I am um, going to finish up, you know, getting the yak ready for tomorrow, hitting the water. Um, and, um, so I'm, I'm finish up doing that and I'll catch back with y'all in a little bit. I will also do, I know I promised y'all the review over my crate that I have right now. Um, that's getting me by So I, I really want the Yak Attack Black Pack. Um, but we'll cover all that in the next video. But, uh, um, I'll get that, this up, this video up today and, um, the next video, the crate up. So, uh, like I said, guys, have any questions and concerns, feel free to let me know. Hope y'all enjoyed. Keep them tight lines.